Hey, Redcon Raider here, and welcome back to Pathfinder Wrath of the Righteous. As today, we continue exploring the Eerie Undergrowth. Though at the moment, you'll notice we're back in the Hunter's Camp. I mean, I gave it some thought, I, I just decided, um, you know, we've got no shortage of heal spells, it and it's not like we can't just go rest if need be. So, we might as well get this cleared up now. And if there happens to be any loot that would cure these guys, we can just keep that and save it for later. Thank you. I thought I was done for. Oh, that's better already. Thank you. I don't know how to thank you. I accept cash. Thank you for your help. None of us are sick anymore. Everyone's been healed. Undead Bane, Star Knife plus two. I mean, not something we'll use, but... Yeah, yeah, that's worth a fair bit. We'll take it. And I guess that's it. Now we move on. Oh, also, as a side note, I was not able to resolve the issue with Regil. It's not actually him, it's Zorm. I might have to do a full respec to get that straightened out, but... Until then, Zorm is basically a chainsaw. I'll try not to abuse it. Devoured Bear, let's take this thing out. Decrepit bogus swarm. Interesting. They better start running. Out of my sight. Yeah, see, so it's definitely Zorm. Though in this case, he's incapable of actually hurting Swarm, so, you know, no harm done. I will get that fixed. We just have to go back to Dresden to actually do it. Headless corpse, what have you got? Find me a way to the shrine. Spare no resources. Otherwise, what do I pay you for? A reason, Cray. Intriguing. Though not really outside the boundaries of what we already knew about him. We already know he's trying to get his hands on something in the shrine. I suppose in that note, it was more about getting into the temple than bringing something back out of it. Swamp Cave? Hello there! Didn't mean to get that close, but fair enough. Let's do this. Yeah, see, Regil's fine. 
As long as we actually move before attacking, Regil's getting more or less the right number of attacks. Ooh. Balthonius the Woe Caller. Stab you or zap you. Why not both? No, you took the velocity out of my raptor. Aside from the giant ominous ghost funnel. Interesting. What are we looking at here? It's like it's funneling ghosts from the area into this shrine. Fairly standard assortment of scrolls, nothing notable there. I'm indispensable. Dark magic is attracting the souls of the dead and dragging them into the depths of the earth. It looks like the source of the corruption blighting this place will be found underground. Ah, I see. And we just saw that swamp cave, so I'm guessing that's where our big bad's hiding. Either that or the uh, doors on the other side. I guess that might be the doors. Small assortment of valuables. Oh, right, yeah, let's see what this does. The altar responds weakly, then falls silent. Maybe you'll be able to summon a spirit here at another time? Right, right, we have to take care of the corruption first. Fair enough. Okay, so now that we've gotten the hint that... Yeah, see, the cave is almost right under this thing. But now that we've gotten that hint, I think we'll avoid that until we've explored everything else. Since it seems like that is where our... our climactic battle will be taking place. Uh, what's up, buddy? Oh, and a cabin in the woods. Those are always good. This hut looks like a forest ranger's post. It looks long abandoned, but you can't shake the feeling that you are not alone. I mean, we literally just saw a ghost, so... yeah? Old Journal, page 23. Four months have passed. Still no replacement. They only sent me dogs with the supply cart. They said the dogs would keep me company. But they only made it worse. Every night they just bark and bark, snarling and staring into the darkness of the forest. Every night I have to listen to their ear-splitting barking. Maybe it's a good thing. At least I can't hear the whispers that way. There are voices out there promising they'll come for me. I don't like them, those voices. They sound evil. I'm glad I have plenty of wine left. I need to drown them out. Hmm. So this is where our poor page master was holed up throughout that whole ordeal. Communal scroll of true saying. I'm not sure Waljif can actually use that. I think he caps at level six. I'll have to double check that. I wonder if we're actually supposed to use that here. I don't want to waste it though. That's that's actually a decent find. Oh. 
Uh, Shadow Wolves, sure. What's going on? Right next to an abandoned cave. That's surely a good sign. Cages. And hanging bodies. And Rugder the Cold Blooded Rage. Well then, is this the source of our corruption? Because that looks mildly intimidating. It's like the, uh, the ghostly frost giants from Kingmaker. Let's get a gander at this guy. Oh, no, it's just a dude. Level 17 Blood Rager. I mean, sure, he's got a, a boatload of various permanent buffs on him, but... But that takes some of the mystique out of it. Though, to be fair, from what I'm seeing here, he's definitely not a pushover. We're, we're going to have to be very careful about how we approach this one. All right, you know what? We haven't busted this thing out in a while, but let's use the Goggles of Pure Sight. That should knock out a fair few of his buffs, make this slightly more manageable. Shoot, did it go off? Did we dispel? Ah, yes, we got Bear's Endurance, Bark Skin, and Sea Invisible. Not great, but the Bark Skin's good. Okay, let's do this. Uh, oh, hey, I didn't even notice you there. Uh, hold tight, I'll be right with you. Time to share your treasures. Oof. Touch AC 38. That's pretty rough. Physical AC 52. Fantastic. Retreat is not an option. Oh my goodness, come on. All right, let's uh, go for another dispel. Hey, okay, that looks promising. What do we get? Sea mantle, true seeing, and legendary proportions. Okay. That's a good start. Can we actually chip this guy now? Nope. Oh, well, his touch AC is actually much lower now. We just rolled like garbage. Albrig, let's get you in there. There we go. First blood. It's not much, but it's something. And here we go. Yes, we're actually starting to land some hits here. Oh, you jerk. You just... He killed one of the uh, spirit catchers. And also, he's headed for our back line. That's not great. I might just have to let Zorm go full chainsaw on this guy. Kneel before I mean, seriously, again, huge swing in CR. We went from Nabasu to this. Stab you or zap you? Why not both?
Ah, crud. No luck that time. And we're tapped on greater dispels. Hey, not bad. We've got him at half. And that's the end of that. Death by Crit Storm. This guy better drop something good. Belt of Physical Might plus four. Okay, that's not terrible. And Key of the Dusk. Plus some other assorted vendor trash. Nothing really notable here. You alright? Please. I'm begging you. Please. Ah, no need to beg. Happy to help. I'm sorry about your fellow catcher. Plus four plate. Oh, more, more spirit catchers. Who are you? What do you want from us? We have nothing of value, I swear. No money, no jewelry. Even our horses have gone missing. The halfling looks at you forlornly from inside the cage, which is locked with a heavy bolt. Easy now. I'm, I'm just here to help. I'm here to rescue you. We can work out payment later. Indeed. This is rare nowadays, but I suppose I shouldn't look a gift rescue in the mouth. Yeah, I'm like 92% sure that's how the saying goes. You guys alright? We're in a cage, our teeth are chattering with fear, and we can barely keep upright because of the shivers. Yes, we're definitely alright. Okay, easy now. So how'd you guys get yourself in this mess? Nothing good, that's what. Some insane wizard put us in a cage. Then he took Hallie and Molly away for some ritual of his. And that's not good. It's not good at all. Well, I, uh, I rescued some of your friends, so, I mean, they should be waiting for you outside. So Vincek's alive? I'm so happy to hear that. We'll go to him right now without wasting another minute in this place. I really expected more pop culture references. And what is this? You guys said you didn't have any valuables. Turns out you had plenty. You just stashed them in a bag that you left behind when you walked out. Oh, good. And the other survivor left, too. I was worried it wouldn't take that into account. I do wish I'd saved both of them, but man, that, uh... That Blood Rager was rough. I'm not sure how we would have dropped him fast enough to stop him. Oh, does this come out on the Swamp Cave? Old Journal, page 48. I've been here. Half a year already? Is anyone keeping track? I hope they are in Gundren, because... Because what? I, I forgot what I was going to say. It's because I hardly sleep at night. The voices mock me. They tell me to rest my head and close my eyes. No, no. If I give in, if I do as they say, they'll come closer. I've seen their shapes, their ghostly shadows outside my window. They're always here, and I don't even have my dogs anymore. They broke off the leash last night and ran into the woods. I went looking for them in the day, but I didn't find anything. Yeah, that'll happen. What you have here is what we call a non-repeating phantasm, a, a Class 5 free-roaming vapor. Real nasty one, too. 
Hey, a Chiva. And that looks like swamps to me. Oh no, we're further south than I thought. That's the swamp cave across from us. Well, we should uh, probably help her out with that. Glabrizu and a couple of Devastators, no big deal. Trust in yourself. Oh, right. Sorry, sorry. Really gotta watch that friendly fire. Yikes, that is some serious damage output. Distract them for me. Velocity Raptor. And we're good. And once again, Serena has faded into the mists obscura. Though I'd wager we'll find some answers inside that shrine. But let's hold off on that for a moment. I'd like to clear all of the overland map before we start poking around any more caves or shrines. Hi. Nice to meet you. Really? Just a normal zombie? Like, 50 feet from where we fought, what's his face? The cold rage? I will see to your demise. Press the attack! Yeah, I don't feel bad about blending that guy. That was just an Omox. We were fighting those guys when we were level 6. Another unfortunate adventurer, sent to their doom by a reason Cray. Yeah, these fights are kind of a joke. Aside from just bogging us down. Is that it? Do we have more? Over near the ghost, perhaps? I see another corpse. Nothing? Oh, there we go.
Oh no, more zombies. What will I do? Time to share your treasure. Thank you, Waljiff. Precision and great. And thank you, Darren. The party powerhouses deftly dispatching our foes. Where's that loot? Oh, I see. It's up top. Interesting. And there's our access point. Gotcha. Oh, is that poor marble bead I see? Restless. I wonder why. Cover me, all right. Ow. Mildly inconvenient. Albrecht just punched a bird out of the air. It was actually pretty fun. Ow. And channel. Jerks. I didn't even notice that. The uh, the crows blinded Ember and, and Vex. I can see clearly now. The pain is gone. Man, I wish it was that easy. All right, let's have a look. The dead body of a horse that has been eaten away by insects. Yep, and that would be the spirit chasers' horses, or the spirit catchers. I guess this must have been their old camp. 
right next to the giant bloody skull altar, I see. That's an interesting choice. This is a place of worship. You see a chalice containing decayed animal organs and some old bones and dried bloodstains around it. The deity that was worshipped here must have been particularly bloodthirsty. And nothing else we can do up here, but we now have two reasons to go chat up the spirit chasers. Oh wow, I think we actually finished exploring the entire map at this point. So yeah, yeah, we'll, uh, we'll go chat up the spirit chasers, then we'll check out the shrine. Again, pretty sure our big bad's in that cave beneath the uh, ghost well. So we'll save that for last. My hearty greetings to the heroes of Grimgrove. Thank you for saving my friends. How do you like the name, by the way? Grimgrove. Brilliant, if you ask me. I came up with it. Cool. Good for you. Uh, by the way, I found your horses. Super dead, I'm afraid. Sorry, man. The halfling sighs heavily. You found them, so I'll keep my promise. Your name is going in my book. My poor horses. My sweet marble bead. Well, I appreciate that. Not that I imagine it'll actually amount to anything. So, uh, so what's next for you guys? The halfling's eyes sparkle with joy. We'll rest here for a couple of days and recover from our adventures. And then we'll go to the nearest tavern and make it into the most incredible story ever based on real events. The bards will be all over it. Sounds like a plan. I would recommend resting somewhere other than here, but you do you. And another thing. Vincek ceremoniously hands you a document of some kind. You are now an honorary spirit catcher and a member of the team, with a license to show for it. Oh, well, thanks. You shouldn't have. Of all the things I didn't know I wanted, this was the thing I didn't know I wanted the most. In carefully penned, multicolored lettering, the paper declares, Official Spirit Catcher's License. Do not duplicate. Beneath the text, you see a green blob with eyes. This must be what the document's author thinks a spirit looks like. Great. Thanks, guys. You you really, really shouldn't have, but... You know, I, I appreciate the gesture. But hey, you know, it's not it's not about the reward. It's about the experience. The real adventure is the friends you made along the way. Time to get our shrine on. Huh. Gotta say, I really thought this place would be in slightly better condition. What is that, a goat god? And that's like a dragon? Black dragon, maybe? The horn configuration is very distinctive. Manticore. Tree.
Hey. Ulrich's mighty hand brushes a delicate green sprig with surprising gentleness. The tree trembles and a figure appears beside it, one already familiar to you. You are alive. You came to my call. Greetings. Greetings, my lady. Ulbrig reverently crosses his arms in a ritual gesture. I am Ulbrig Olesk, chosen warrior of the heavenly griffin, Ervar. Ervar's chosen. The wolf sounds surprised. Ah, I believe I understand. Welcome to my shrine. I have had no visitors in such a long time. Not mortals or spirits or gods. And I am glad to have a chance to host worthy guests here one last time. One last time? What do you mean? I am dying. A deity cannot live without mortals. But what remains of my people? What remains of me in their memory? But folks remember you. That slip of a girl, Yasena, bends over backward to please you. The chieftain of Gundren and his whole band swear oaths in your name. Isn't that enough? They swear oaths in my name? The wolf laughs. They do not even know my name. They refer to me in the Numerian way as Serena. My true name, Karenai, is forgotten, lost. Like a trinket left behind in an empty house. And what about my cult, my rituals? That absurd feast day that is closer to mockery than veneration? No, my friend, these people are near strangers to me. They do not know me, and I do not understand them. I am alive only thanks to a miracle, this fragile little tree, and not for much longer. Oh, that is interesting. See, I've, I've speculated a bit about that before, about how the gods in most of these fantasy settings tend to be reliant on their mortal worshippers to survive. But this kind of explores a twist on that, where the entity still exists, but the worshippers have... the worshippers have gotten the right so wrong that, that they literally don't count towards sustaining that entity anymore. Is that why you summoned us here? I sensed that you had awoken, Ulbrig. It was like the rising of the sun, its rays like a kiss on Ervar's beak. I wanted to see you while I still lived. Hey, are you really the last god of Sarkaris? Not the last, but there are few of us left, very few. Just like our people. The remaining settlements are falling apart, or losing the spirit of Sarkaris and forgetting their gods. As the communities die out, so will we. In this forest, not far from my temple, you can encounter lesser deities of the natural world. See what they have become after years of oblivion. Soon there will be nothing left for any of us. Not even a memory. We'll see about that. Don't be so ready to give up, my lady. We will yet see Sarkaris green and brimming with people as before. But these are not the answers you came here for, yes? I can sense the most important question burning you from the inside, Albrig. So ask it. Go on, Albrig. You came all this way for answers. Answer me this. What happened to Ervar? Albrig breathes the words like a prayer. Why did he stop answering me? Ervar is alive. I rightly guessed that our noble kin would not part with life so easily. But, Ulbrig, her voice is hesitant. You cannot speak to him until you remember everything you have forgotten. True enough, there's a lot I've forgotten. My memories are like a heap of bright fragments. No matter what way I turn them, I can't see the full picture. These memories are hidden from you for a reason. But do not be afraid, Albrig. Sometimes what is lost can be restored. I will try to help you. It's interesting that she keeps 
hesitating before saying his name. Like that's not really his name, or she wants to call him something else. Obviously too early to speculate just yet, but there's some interesting possibilities there. So, how exactly can you help us help Albreg? I can help him restore his memory of the past, but only as much as he wants to remember. The wolf looks Albreg dead in the eye. What do you say? It will be painful to remember. It's more painful to live without knowing myself. If you can help me, do it. Please. The wolf's eyes flare with amber light, and the visions of the past rise up before you. The vision that appears before the commander in the amber glow of wolfish eyes is hazy, the details unclear. In the very center of the vision there are two men. One of them is Ulbrig, his face twisted in terror, pain, and fury. Blood streams from a deep gash in his neck. He shouts something, but the words are lost. The other man's face appears blurred, but in his hands there is a bloody knife. Where is this happening? Tearing his eyes away from the warring men, the commander focuses on their surroundings. A stone floor, smoking torches, a blood-stained altar. This place is familiar. It should be, for the commander was there only recently. It is the secret demon worshipper shrine under current Glen. Who is Albrig fighting with? No matter how hard the commander peers at the man wielding the knife, his facial features slip beyond his grasp. But the muscular body, the red hair, the embroidered clothing, it all serves to make the two men, if not identical, then at least extremely similar. Albrig is being attacked by one of his own tribe, most likely a close relative. What is Albrig shouting? A dull buzzing sounds in the commander's ears, muffling everything else. He strains his hearing, but he only manages to make out a single word of Albrig's. Brother. The man with the knife says something in reply, but the commander cannot make out the words or even the voice that utters them. What's happening now? Weakened from blood loss, Solbrig fails to dodge the next strike. The killer's knife plunges into his neck, and a fountain of blood sprays out. Solbrig slumps to the floor, and in that instant, the secret temple starts to shake. The vision fades to blackness on the image of the bleeding Solbrig but the commander manages to glimpse the figure of a huge creature with wings outspread. Flinging the killer aside, the griffin carefully lifts Ulbrich's body from the ground, and the vision dissipates. Very intriguing. Brother. Ulbrich is breathing heavily, pressing his hand to the place where the traitor's knife cut him open. Slain by my own brother. I'm dead? You're alive. Ervar saved you, carried you to safety, and hid you from those who would have hurt you. You slept for a hundred years within the stone. Yes, now I remember. Ulbrig slowly removes his hand from his neck and looks at his fingers as though expecting to see blood there. That foul altar in current glen. The dried blood, human bones. So that's what happened. My kin rejected their god and bowed down before a demon. My own brother stabbed me to rid our clan of Ervar's protection. You're right, Karenai. It hurts to remember it. But thank you for restoring my memories. You have remembered what you were ready to remember. There are still secrets you are keeping from yourself. But maybe that is for the best. You will remember everything when you are able. Thanks, Karen. I, that, that answers some questions, but it brings up an awful lot of new ones. 
You're right. But I've remembered enough to set my head spinning. Let's talk about this later. In Dresden. Sure. Uh, no problem. Thanks. Uh, thanks again, Car Karen I. It is my pleasure to help a friend. Even if it is the last thing I do. Dying will not be so lonely, I think. If I know that someone in this world remembers me as I truly am. Not a chance. Let it never be said that all Brigolesque allows a good turn to go unrepaid. I won't let you die, my lady. I recognize that fire. Yes, you have always been ready to come to the rescue. But saving me, I fear, is beyond your power. You know, you don't have to die. You've got an entire cult in Gundren. I mean, sure, they're a little misled, but I'm sure you could set them right, right? And what should I be doing, in your opinion? Appear in the town and show them the correct way to perform my rituals and pronounce my name? To plead for adoration like a beggar seeking charity? They would ridicule such a pathetic deity. And they would be right to. But my lady, there's no reason why you'd have to do that yourself. That's why gods have chosen ones, after all. Ervar chose me, and I talked with him for many years, performing rites and relaying his will to the people. Choose one of the townsfolk, and they can restore your cult as you see fit. Who am I supposed to choose? The people of Gundren and I, we're strangers to one another. Who among them is worthy of bearing my blessings? How is this even a question? I mean, it's either Yasena, the one who actually wants the position and already has a rapport with... with a version of Karenai, or Sigborn, the Numerian mercenary who, while he is well-meaning, has seemingly very little interest in actually preserving those ancient rites, and mostly just seems to treat their god as a, a novelty. That aside, from what we saw of Sigborn, he's none too bright, and the biggest thing he brought to the table was his Numerian mercenaries, and we just straight up killed most of them, so... I think we'll... I think we'll stick with Yasena. Yasena, my greatest and final disappointment. Yes, I thought she would make a worthy servant, but her head is full of nonsense from tales and books. It's not me she believes in, but her own fantasies. What good is a chosen one who does not even know my true name? The girl's head's all muddled, right enough. But she is devoted to you, and to old Sarkaris. She doesn't know our ancient ways, but how could she if she grew up in the ashes of our land? Don't spurn the girl. Teach her. And she will teach the rest of the townsfolk. I have no faith that she will prove herself useful. But if you think otherwise... Very well, I will give her one more chance. Perhaps the seal of hers you speak of is strong enough to melt the glaciers of ignorance within her. That's the spirit. Hey, uh, one, one last thing. This is kind of awkward, but... Um, I don't suppose there are any ancient relics around the shrine? I'm uh, asking for an acquaintance. My shrine is deserted and desolate. Your own eyes can see that there is nothing here. Right. Okay, well, I'll, uh, I'll leave you to it then. Thanks for your time, Karen. So long, and thank you for the sage advice. I judge the people of Gundren too harshly. Perhaps they are not as alien to me and Sarkaris as I thought. Yeah, perhaps. And I mean, given that your options are basically get with the times or I guess I'll die. I'm thinking uh, the former is slightly more appealing, but I mean, that's just me. If given the option, I would certainly try to work with people who could keep me alive. But then again, I'm not a god. Yet. I mean, what's the alternative? Turning out like the rest of these guys? Goat God and Dragon God and Manticore. 
That does beg the question of how Erbar survived without worshippers, though, and I suspect that... Ulbrig's mysterious backstory has something to do with that. And that's a Baylor. That, that's an interesting thing to have in a an ancient Sarkorian shrine. I mean, to be fair, it's certainly not the first demon we've heard about the ancient Sarkorians worshipping, but... But it is interesting that it's in the same shrine as Serena. Yeah, yeah, we've got a lot of unanswered questions here. I, I do find myself looking forward to finding out more. Though I do suspect we're also closing in on the end of the current arc for Ulbrig in Act 3. As with most of the other companions, I imagine we won't be getting any real answers until Act 5. That said, I think we're pretty much done here. Um, we're past time, so I feel like this is a good place to call it. We'll hit the pause button for now. I'll give this place another pass off screen just to be sure. And uh, we will pick up here next time as we set our sights on the mysterious Swamp Cave. I imagine that must be our climactic encounter for this area, either that or the locked doors. But either way, we'll tackle that next time. See you then. Oh, and special thanks to the Raiders, the fine folks who help make these videos possible. Including, but not limited to, Dragon Matrix 7, Matthew Smith, The Revenant, Aloise, Dracket, Theory V23, Egon Alter, Emil, Excelsior, Goatleaf, James Tremay, Kazor, Mark Tienza, Nathan Welch Jr., Overlord Ferrum, Random Passerby, Robbie B., Thomas Piatkowski, Trip Hop and Skip, and Valenrook. Thanks for your support, guys. That said, if you'd also like to help support the channel, then feel free to push the buttons that do the things. Trust me, it does make a difference. Or you could even check out the PayPal, the Patreon, the Nexus GG, or the YouTube memberships. Links are in the description.